Hello and welcome to uh, day five of week three of our journey through 1 John in Greek. Uh, today's verse is 1 John 2 5. <clears throat> so if you have a little experience with Greek, go ahead and see if you can translate it. And now here's my translation. And whoever should keep his word truly in this one, the love of God has been completed. <clears throat> in this we know that in him we are. So there's my um, translation of it, first draft. Okay, so let's now dig in. You can go away now if you're really good at Greek and you just wanted to try it on your own and reconfirm that you're a genius. Now, let's go on with the uh, breakdown of the translation. <clears throat> so, we said this was, and whoever should keep of him the word or his word. Now, the de here, whoever should keep his word or the word of him, um, might throw us off a little bit that his comes first. But uh, again, it can't go, it doesn't go with the verb, and so it must go with the word. <clears throat> de here, it's been uh, elided. The normally it's de with an epsilon, but it's easier to say don than to say de on. And so Greek elided the epsilon so that you could just say post on. Um, <clears throat> de is a procrastinator, or Technically, we call it a post-positive. That means it's always late from where we would want it to be in the sentence. And so even though it's second, we translate it first into English. And hosan. Hosan means whoever. Uh, as we'll see, we'll tell you what kind of clause that is on the next slide. But on is like a little bomb. It, it makes everything contingent. It, it throws everything up in the air. And so that's why we're, we're not surprised that this is subjunctive. Wait to the next slide for that. So host by itself means who, hosan means whoever. So whoever should keep, uh, this is subjunctive, and that's where the should comes from, um, his word. Now word here uh, does indeed seem to be his uh, command. It doesn't seem to be Jesus. And so uh, I will concede to Greg Logan, I think his name is, who uh, if you're watching Greg, uh, for comments you made about me uh, seeing a connection between the word and Jesus, earlier in 1 John 1, <clears throat> I need to think through that a little bit more, but I think you're at least right that in this verse, the word is not Jesus, but it is, it is basically God's will, what God has commanded. So whoever should keep his word, um, truly in this person, the love of God has been completed. Some translations, I suppose the King James probably says, has been perfected. I'm not sure that the word perfected or perfect uh, communicates well in English the meaning of teleao, because perfection in English tends to imply the absolute best possible. And I don't think that that's really the sense here. It's more a sense of completion or maturity. Or, um, uh, so I, I think completed works better here. The love of God has been completed, although has been perfected, you know, has a ring to it, I'll admit it. The phrase, the love of God, is a little bit uh, ambiguous in and of itself. Let me give you an example. So if I say, the love of God leads me to uh, do good to others. Um, so there, it's my love for God. God is the object of my love. But you could, you could do another sentence where you say, the love of God let hi led him to send his son to die on the cross. There, it's God who's doing the loving. And so what we find is that the phrase, the love of God, could be taken in a couple ways. It could be love of God as the object of love, or it could be the love of God as the subject who's doing the loving. Now, we call these two options objective genitive and subjective genitive. This is genitive case. That means the ooh here tells me that I'm supposed to put an of in front of it. The love of the God. Um, this isn't the word for of. This is the word for the. It's the ooh on the end that tells me I need to stick an of in front of the love of the God. It's the genitive ending that tells me that, for those of you who haven't had much Greek. And so the question in this situation is, is to theu an objective genitive, my love for God, or a subjective genitive, God's love for something else? Um, I suspect in this context 
uh, that it's it could be a double entendre too, I suppose. But I, the context makes me personally lean toward uh, God as the object of love because I'm keeping his word and my keeping of his word demonstrates my love for God, if that makes sense. So that would make this an objective genitive. The one who keeps his word in this person truly, love for God has been perfected or has been completed, has reached its telos, has reached its, its goal. Uh, more on that, the tense of this in a second. So in this, in this way or in this manner, we know that in him we are. Okay, this is a noun clause with the hoti there. Uh, we know what? We know that we're in him. All of that is the direct object of the verb gnoskomen. Okay, well, let's go in now into the grammar into more depth. We've kind of done it a little bit. So hosan, uh, if hos is a relative pronoun and relative pronouns introduce relative clauses, so like I am the one who is talking right now, who is a relative pronoun and who is talking right now is a relative clause. When you introduce on into the mix, it becomes a conditional relative clause, okay? Conditional relative clause, whoever. And that uh, construction, subjunctive is coming, subjunctive is coming. I expect a subjunctive verb uh, when I see uh, an on in this sort of context. Now the parsing of this, it's from tereo. All the letters of tere are there, except the epsilon has crashed. We have a little police line saying, there's been a crash here. Um, so uh, it is tere, all the letters of the, all the letters are there, so it's present tense. Um, this a ending is fried, so it's o, a, s, a, and instead of it being epsilon iota, because it's subjunctive, the epsilon has been fried into an eta, and the iota is hanging on for dear life as a subscript. And so it is indeed third person singular, and it is active, but because the vowel is fried, it's subjunctive. So whoever should keep of him the word, or whoever should keep the word of him, whoever should keep his word. Okay. Truly, in this person, the love of God has been perfected. Can you parse this? If you didn't catch what I just had there. So, Ty, normally we start at the end and move ba backwards to parse, although you might see a little bit of of uh, a, the tep, a little double reduplication on the front. So you're probably thinking perfect already. Uh, and it is indeed perfect tense. But Thai, what kind of ending is that? Lu o mai, lu e lu e, Thai. That's a third person singular ending. And it's tentatively middle or passive. Sometimes as I keep going back in the word, I get new information that trumps the tentativeness. But I'm going to tentatively say that this is uh, third person singular and either middle or passive. Now the word, what word is this? I see the reduplication on the front and I'm left with teleo. Guess what? It's teleo. Uh, and so the omicron, this course, this omega here corresponds to the omicron. What this tells me is there is no conjuncting vowel, conjunct connecting vowel. Normally I would expect an epsilon in front of a tie ending um, in many circumstances. There is no uh, connecting vowel. There's no cartilage here. The bone is against the bone. And that tells me it's perfect middle or passive because that's where the ending is shoved right onto the stem with no connecting vowel. So indeed it is perfect uh, in, and it is indicative. Uh, even though that's long, it's long because omegas, I mean, omicrons typically lengthen when you shove an ending right on them. It's not lengthened because of the subjunctive. So it's an indicative. Third singular because tie. Now it could have been middle or passive but in context, passive works well. The love of God has, because it's perfect, been, because it's passive, and completed, because it's uh, teleao, and the subject is love, which is third person singular. It's a, it's a she, right? Because this is feminine, hey, agape. So it's uh, third person singular, she might be completed or should be completed. Okay, the, don't think I have any notes on this last bit. In this person, we know, uh, in this way, I mean, uh, this was in this one, but this seems to be more like in this instance or something like that. We know that in him we are. So the hoti is a, uh, a conjunction that introduces a noun clause. Okay, so that leads us with those of you who've stuck this far, uh, might want to practice your pronunciation. 
So I will name the letters and pronounce them as usual, uh, but feel free to pause the recording and try it on your own. On your mark, set, go. Omicron Sigma with a rough breathing mark, Hos, although some, some people say Haas. Uh, Delta, D. Uh, alpha, Nu, On. So Host On. Tau, Eta, Rho, Eta with a subscript. Iota subscript. Tere. Uh, alpha, Upsilon, Tau, Omicron, Upsilon. Au, Tu. Tau, Omicron, Nu. Tone. So uh, tone is uh, one of the many forms of the article. Um, lambda, Omicron, Gamma, Omicron, Nu. Logon or Logon, depending on how you pronounce it. Alpha, Lambda, Eta, Theta, Omega, Sigma. Alethos. Epsilon, Nu, N. Tau, Omicron, Upsilon, Tau, Omega, with the Yoda subscript, hanging on for dear life. N, Tuto, uh, in this one, and this is the demonstrative pronoun. Eta with a rough breathing mark, hey, another form of the article, uh, or the word the. Alpha, gamma, alpha, P, eta, agape, a word you may have heard before. Tau, omicron, upsilon, two, of the. Um, it's another form of the word the in the genitive. Theta, epsilon, omicron, upsilon. Theu, of God. Tau, epsilon, tau, epsilon, lambda, epsilon, iota, omega, tau, alpha, iota. Teteleotai. Epsilon nu is N again. Tau, Omicron, Upsilon, Tau, Omega, Iota subscript. Tuto in this instance. Gamma, Iota, Nu, Omega, Sigma, Kappa, Omicron, Mu, Epsilon, Nu. Gnoskomen. Uh, Omicron with a rough breathing mark. Tau, Iota. Hoti, or some would say Hoti. Epsilon, Nu again, N. Um, let me buy an N. Uh, so this is in. Uh, alpha, Upsilon, Tau, Omega with a subscript. Auto, this is the personal pronoun, just like this. But this was genitive of him, and this is dative in, because of the preposition it's in him. Um, epsilon, Sigma, Mu, Epsilon, Nu. S-men. Uh, okay, not the X-men, but the S-men. And uh, this is an enclitic because there's an accent on the previous syllable, it doesn't have to take an accent. So uh, let me try to read it all. Uh, hostan, te re autu ton logon, alethos en tuto, he agape tu theu, teteleo, tete, ha, teteleotai, en tuto, gnoskomen hoti, en auto es men. Okay, I tried. Well, tomorrow, actually Monday, we will, Lord willing, look at 1 John 2, 6.